piece is painted, crackled, distressed, then antiqued with hand-painted decoratives on the front. I start by taking off the hardware and then I'm focusing on my crackled areas first and foremost. The paint I am putting on, it's a paint and primer in one and I am choosing a dark gray, smoky gray color for my cracks. So this color is the color of the actual crack that you will see when the paint starts splitting and separating. Your paint must be bone dry before you start applying your crackle medium. Now this is not a china crackle which is a totally different procedure. This is a weathered crackle. Um, they're very different products. This product feels like uh, I'm applying a top coat. It has that same texture and feel to it. It will take about an hour to set up. I put a fan on to just kind of expedite that. Um, and while it's all setting up, all my little spots, I'm going to apply my chalk paint. This is my top coat paint that I will skim over all of those little gray areas. But first I am painting my front panels because I want this good and dry, bone dry, uh, so that I can come back and put some hand-painted decoratives on it. And I've got so many different techniques going on with this particular piece that I'm having to jump around and accommodate all of these layers. Um, so there is, um, there is quite a uh, game plan here. So you can see I'm starting to go over my little dark gray areas. This, this is my cracks. And I'm going to get a close-up here for you in a minute to show you how the minute that paint hits that crackle medium, it starts sliding and cracking that paint. You cannot go over and over the same piece. Once you hit it, move on because what will happen is your paint will slide right off and you will ruin the whole crackle look. Um, and it's something you might want to practice with before actually going to cabinetry or furniture because it's tricky, but once you get it, it's just such a fun technique to play around with. So once I've hit all of my little gray patches, I went and followed through with the paint around the entire piece. So my front panels are bone dry while the rest is drying. I am finding my center point of each by just measuring out an X. The center of that X is my center point. And I'm using a level to get some horizontal and vertical lines. I will also um, measure out kind of a little grid around those horizontal lines just just so I can have some uh, centering points when I hand sketch my decorative. I want them to look hand painted, but I don't want them to be sloppy and leaning and off centered. So I'm using a watercolor pencil and I'm just free flowing it, just sketching out whatever floats my boat for that moment. Um, and then after my design is laid out. I'm coming in with a black flat paint. Now this uh, watercolor pencil will wipe off with a wet paper towel. Now, I'm not doing this perfect. I want this to look hand painted. I could have used a stencil. I could have created a design on a stencil and burned it, but I really want this to look hand painted. So I'm letting it be a little rough. I'll refine it with my second coat of paint, which I will be using a nice uh, antiqued copper um, metallic over it. But for now it needs to dry. So while that's drying, you see that pull that's on that one drawer? That screw was stripped and I could not get it off, so normally I would have taken that off. So And I just got frustrated and said, forget it, I'm just going to move forward and left it. But now what I'm doing is hitting my distressed areas and I'm doing that by just taking the same paint that I used for my cracks, my little crackle spots, and I'm just edging around. So I want it to look like 
that paint is worn off on all the edges and that's the underneath paint. That's the idea. And look at how easy this is. I'm just edging it out. So my decoratives are now dry and I'm using a wet paper towel to wipe off any remnant marks from my watercolor pencil. And I showed that really quick there. That is my metallic paint. So I'm coming in over it. I'm smoothing out any rough areas that I feel, you know, could be cleaned up a little bit. And this is a really nice, kind of a Spanish copper look. It's an antiqued copper, not brilliant, because again, I want this piece to look like it's 100 years old. And once that dries, I'm going to come in and start antiquing. This is a nice warm brown. Um, it is a water base. Everything I'm using today is water base. So this is a wet paper towel. I'm just kind of wiping off any before it can set up and dry. I'm using a cheesecloth to burnish it in. And once that cheesecloth is wet, you've got to pull out a dry one. Uh, if, you, if it's full of glaze, it's just going to keep smearing it around and around, and it gets quite frustrating. But as you can see, it's getting smoother and smokier. It's because I'm continually pulling out a cleaner cheesecloth or folding it over. Um, this one's getting wet, and here you'll see. See that? Folded it over and get the dry part to just smooth it out. It is pulling that glaze off, so you're left with a smoky tint. Here you'll see I, I'm just wiping it down with a wet paper towel, especially your larger areas. This helps the product stay wet longer. It um, gives you more of a window to smoke it up. If you just apply the glaze straight on a large piece, you'll get streaks that you just can't burnish off. It also helps to just section off and do each section from seam to seam or edge to edge. Um, little areas, you can see these two areas I'm doing simultaneously because they're so small. So once it's completely antiqued, you've got to let it dry completely um, before applying your top coat. Now, I have a shop fan that allowed me to dry each layer of product um, before jumping to my next. So that allowed me to do this entire project in five hours. Now this top coat that I'm applying is a matte finished polyurethane. You won't see it when it dries because it's so flat. Uh, the reason I don't want to sheen is I don't want it to look new. Again, I want it to look authentic in its antiquity. Once I put the hardware back on, Man, this piece is so gorgeous, and it is so fun to do. I, I encourage you to try all these techniques and enjoy. It's really fun. Mm -hmm.